So Crystal is a U.S. Air Force veteran with 22 years of teaching experience, all in alternative education. In 2004, she was the first teacher nationwide to earn National Board certification while teaching in a juvenile detention facility and renewed that certification in 2014. She served as the president of the Kentucky National Board Network from 2018 to 2020, um, at which time I took over as president of the Kentucky National Board Network. Crystal, your tenacity and commitment to Kentucky students is an inspiration. Our network grew under your leadership and continues in our mission of supporting accomplished teaching in the Commonwealth. Because of your hard work and the path that you and our founding president, Holly Bloodworth, have forged. I'm so honored now to welcome all of you to the Kentucky National Board Network Certified Teachers, uh, the Kentucky National Board Certified Teachers Network Recognition Ceremony in honor of our newest NBCTs in Kentucky. Thank you so much for joining us today. We know how much time, so, so many hours of deep, uncomfortable reflection this process takes, and we know it wasn't easy, especially during a global pandemic. But sometimes the most hard won accomplishments are the most rewarding. Your practice is better because of the National Board certification process, and you are now better, able to adapt and make those nimble, just-in-time decisions that will benefit your students' learning. Your current and future students are so, so lucky to have you as their teachers. We appreciate everyone's willingness to adapt and be flexible with the ceremony being virtual this year and the technical dif difficulties we've already had this morning. Um, and especially today when the governor has declared a state of an emergency due to our ice storm. So we're, we're so appreciative of you and your flexibility to roll with, that, with everything with us. Um, and we're so glad that all of our speakers have been able to join so far without any connectivity issues, um, of with the exception, of course, of Crystal's microphone this morning. Um, we hope that we'll continue throughout the ceremony. Of course, we regret that um, you won't have that communal feeling that comes with being in the same room with your fellow NBCTs and these distinguished speakers. Um, you won't hear the same applause that we normally do. Um, we know you're probably disappointed that you won't be shaking Governor Bashir's hand today um, and taking our iconic photo on the Capitol Rotunda steps. Still, we have tried hard to make this day special, and even though it's virtual, um, we look forward to a post-vaccine time in the near future when we can come together again in real face-to-face -face celebration of this amazing accomplishment. So please bear with us today um, as we work with the platform to give you the best virtual experience possible. Um, we have ASL interpreters with us today, and we are so grateful to them for their service to make our ceremony accessible to the deaf and hard of hearing community. Um, as we move between speakers, we will be pinning and unpinning, and we appreciate your patience during our transitions. You can just think of it as in real time when um, people are exiting and entering the stage. Um, we have had to make um, one schedule change due to the commissioner being called into the Senate Education Committee. He will be moved to speak first today, um, followed by National Board CEO and President Peggy Brookins. So thank you um, for making this journey to become NBCTs and join our national community. We hope that you will take the next step and officially join our state network um, if you haven't yet and stay actively connected to the national board work in Kentucky. There is so much work to be done to ensure that every district, every school and every child has an NBCT in their K-12 experience. We need your help and you will find new opportunities um, to continue growing in your leadership. We'll open up for you if you choose to take up this work alongside us. We are honored today to have truly incredible education leaders um, who have taken the time to pause in their work and celebrate your outstanding accomplishment. Um, thank you to the members of the Kentucky Board of Education who are joining us, Holly Bloodworth, you, Lou Young, Claire Batt, and Randy Poe. Thank you to the Kentucky School Board Association for joining us, um, especially Josh Shelta and Laura Cole. We also understand that many Kentucky legislators from both the State House of Representatives and the State Senate are joining us today, and we are so honored to have you tuning in. A big thank you to the Kentucky Department of Education, um, and especially Jocelyn Waddell um, for her tireless efforts and all of your efforts in helping us put together this very special event today. So without further ado, we welcome um, Commissioner Glass. Is Commissioner Glass on? I am. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Um, to celebrate our NBCTs today. So Jason E. Glass is Commissioner of Education at the Kentucky Department of Education and a native of Brandenburg, Kentucky. 
um, and a third generation Kentucky educator. He has been chief learner and commissioner of education in Kentucky since September 2020. Before that, he had been superintendent and chief learner at Jeffco Public Schools in Colorado since 2017. We are so honored to have you here today to recognize our new MBCTs and making it fit into your very busy schedule. So welcome, Commissioner Glass. Thanks so much, Sarah. I appreciate you allowing me to be part of this ceremony uh, today. It's really um, joyous and I'm excited to be part of it. Let me begin my remarks by congratulating, being the first uh, due to my schedule conflict, to congratulate our new Kentucky National Board Certified Teachers. As you have experienced, the NBC process, NBCT process is rigorous, it's intense, it's challenging, and it's time consuming. And the fact that you've all chosen to go through this process and that you've been awarded your National Board certification is proof enough that you're all exemplary education professionals. So on behalf of all of us at the Kentucky Department of Education and the State Board of Education, congratulations. We are so proud of you. We honor the work and sacrifices that you made to get to this day. It goes without saying, uh, especially in this group, that teaching is an honored profession, but I'd like to speak a little bit about what makes it a profession. Uh, first, it's more than just a job. Teaching is something that people are called into. Uh, this comes from a spirit of service to others, a deep commitment and caring for students, and a desire to be connected to the future and the creation of a better world. Teaching isn't something everybody can or should do. In addition to it being part of who you are, it also requires um, significant pre-service training to make sure that new teachers are appropriately trained and screened for entry into this profession. This pre-service training should involve work in content knowledge and pedagogical skills, and it also should involve a clinical or experiential component, all of, uh, all of which you, exp you, you experienced. The quality of pre-service experience is a hallmark of any real profession, and it's part of the teaching profession as well. But regardless of how strong that pre-service experience, how, how powerful it was, we all know that new teachers still are in need of a great deal of support in their first few years. And I, I was once a beginning Kentucky teacher, and I can speak firsthand about the struggle, struggles and the incredible time investments that new teachers experience. I want to go back to my, the teachers, I'm sorry, to the students I had in my first year and apologize to them for, for <laughs> what a struggling new teacher I was. I learned so much in those first few years, and I also made so many mistakes early on, and I benefited from the KTIP program in Kentucky and was surprised when I came back to Kentucky to learn that this had been eliminated for new teachers in the state. Going forward, I, I believe we've got to prioritize the restoration of KTIP or some meaningful internship program for our new teachers. Our new teachers have significant needs and they require significant intentional support and a network around them in those first few years. Pre-service and induction supports are no doubt part of what makes teaching a perfection, per, profession, but your accomplishments that we are celebrating today is an example of another key element of the teaching profession, and that is the ongoing and lifelong work and commitment to mastering the art and the science of teaching. Yes, great teaching is about strong content knowledge. It's about having a bag of evidence-based instructional approaches that you can deploy and use to support students wherever they are in their learning, but more important than that, the ability to build meaningful relationships and connections with students is really key. The greatest teachers in our profession know their content, they know what changes or interventions they need to apply, but their students, I think, will tell you what made them great teachers it was more than just what the student learned. It extended to what the teacher inspired or ignited within the student. So teaching is a great and noble profession, and your accomplishment here today is a bona fide sign that you are at the apex of that profession. We honor you for that, and we're grateful that you're using your talents and energy for better educational experiences for students in the Commonwealth. I do want to end with one more critical aspect of our profession and a request of you. While teaching is, as I've mentioned, a wonderful and noble profession, we also know that we struggle with recruiting new students to enter this profession. And this is especially true of our students of color and all forms of diversity. It's important that our students 
especially our black and brown students and those from historically underserved or marginalized groups, that they have teachers as role models that have similar backgrounds and experience to what our students experience, experience themselves, that they can see, see themselves in the teacher workforce. Each of you has an opportunity and you have a moral and I would say a professional obligation to be an ambassador from the teaching profession to our young people and asking that they consider becoming a teacher. I saw some research recently uh, from uh, Dean Vasquez Helig from UK that talked about some of the most important influences on uh, the choice to become a teacher or not are the teachers that students have. So you're an incredible uh, source of inspiration and can be someone that um, uh, ignites that idea that teaching could be a path forward stu for students. So I'm asking all of you to talk about your teaching career with your students and to find ways to connect with different groups of students, especially diverse students, to plant that seed that teaching, that a career in teaching is something that students should consider. Our work in teaching is a connection to the future and we have to work to make sure that future is a better place for all of our students and all of our children. Thanks so much for letting me be part of this experience today and congratulations again on this incredible professional accomplishment. We are so proud of you and thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We appreciate your support and are so excited for the future of public education in Kentucky. Now we are both humbled and honored to welcome the President and CEO of the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards Organization, Peggy Brookins, NBCT. Formerly an NBPTS board member, Peggy joined the National Board as Executive Vice President in December 2014 and was named President and CEO of the organization in November 2015. Her long career as an educator in includes many national leadership positions and accolades. In July 2014, President Barack Obama named Brookins as a member of the President's Advisory Commission on Education Excellence for African Americans. She joined the National Board from the Engineering and Manufacturing Institute of Technology at Forest High School in Ocala, Florida, which she co-founded in 1994 and where she served as director and a mathematics instructor. On the NPPTS board from 2007 to 2011, Brooken served as an as audit committee chair and on the CEO search committee. In addition, she has served on the board of In Bloom, the conference board of mathematical sciences ad hoc committee on teachers as professionals, the content technical working group for the partnership for assessment of for readiness for college and careers as a commissioner on the council for accreditation and educator preparation. She has served as a national trainer for AFT Thinking Mathematics, K-12, 3-6, 6-8, Common Core, Collaborator and National Trainer for Thinking Mathematics, 6-8. As a member of the PARC Assessment Team, serves on the Advisory Board of Digital Promise, SREB Teacher Prep Commission, P-21 Executive Board, the Executive Board of the Trump Foundation of Israel, and on the Board of Trustees of the National Center of, on Education and the Economy. Brookins achieved her National Board certification in Adult and Young Adolescent Mathematics in 2003 and renewed in 2013. She has been inducted into the University of Florida Hall of Fame in 2009, is a Florida Education Association Everyday Hero, and received the Association's Excellence in Teaching Award. In 2013, Brookins was named an Aspen Ideas Festival Scholar. She received a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Florida. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Peggy, to celebrate our new NBCTs in Kentucky. We're so honored to have you. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you to all the other members of the Kentucky National Board uh, Network. I'm incredibly honored uh, to be here today. Uh, for me and our staff, uh, we've joined you in Frankfurt year after year, and it's always been a highlight. Um, and throughout the year, the energy and commitment we see in your work is always visible. And we see that today by the VIP guests and educators um, and families that have joined us today. And I'm grateful for all the tireless work uh, that the network does. But before I address my remarks to the new National Board Certified Teachers, I want to express my gratitude to Governor Bashir, Lieutenant Governor Coleman, uh, Representative James Tifton of Taylorsville, uh, Commissioner Glass for his wonderful remarks, 
uh, and Eddie Campbell, uh, the president of the Kentucky Education Association. Together, uh, you've helped to establish a landscape in Kentucky that values accomplished teaching. Last year, the Commonwealth had more new national board certified teachers than 45 other states. You've led the way with support and preparation, and you've done that through legislation as well. Each of you has contributed in significant ways, and your presence today speaks volumes. So thanks for all you do and continue to do for teachers and in turn for their students. Shortly, we'll be joined by a young woman who is the pride of National Board, uh, a student of board certified teachers, the daughter of a board certified teacher, and someone I've literally seen grow from a young child to a poised young woman. So Sophie Farmer, thanks for your presence today. As National Board's President and CEO, I'll start my remarks by acknowledging the great partnership that we have with your team here in Kentucky. There are more than 4,000 MBCTs and more than 600 teachers currently pursuing National Board certification. Because of COVID, we released one group of scores in December and 82 teachers in Kentucky achieved board certification. We look forward to even more earning this distinction when we have our unusual second score release in late February. These 82 MBCTs deserve a hearty congratulations. We know that you have worked hard. We know how much this means to you personally and to your communities. As a National Board Certified Teacher myself, gatherings like this one hold a deep personal significance. National Board Certification is known as our profession's highest mark of accomplished teaching. This is a great professional achievement because it has been created by teachers for teachers, and it's also based on our performance in the classroom, on our deep self-reflection on our teaching and an assessment of our content and pedagogical knowledge. For all you've accomplished, I like to look at this moment as the beginning of a new journey. To be as meaningful as board certification really can be, I challenge you to seize this opportunity, to use your expertise, serve as teacher leaders, represent the profession, and serve as change agents in your school district, state, and nationally. So now, in the presence of the governor and education leaders, the question for you is, what lies ahead? What do you aspire to do? And what role does your certification play in that aspiration? National Board certification is an excellent step in the right direction. So reground yourself. Make a commitment to spread your instructional expertise. Will you mentor novice teachers? Will you support candidates through national board certification? Will you blog about your experience and how your content understanding has grown through this process? As a leader, you'll have the opportunity to influence what happens in the education landscape. The notion of teacher leadership is perhaps the most significant concept I can ask you to focus on today because you have the capacity to continue delivering great learning opportunities for your students while your impact is well beyond the classroom. This board certification you've achieved is the beginning of a journey to achieving remarkable things in education and the sky is the limit. So pick something to do and do it. We know that if you set your mind to something, you will deliver, you've proven that already. I'll reinforce to you that taking no action is not acceptable. Get active and advocate for issues that matter to you and your students. Create new programs for students and your school. Partner with your local leaders to address challenges that will have an impact. What I most want you to realize is that your national board certificate is more than a piece of framed cardstock on the wall. It's a tool to leverage as a leader for system change, for better schools, for teachers, and for successful students. 
From our founding in 1987, the National Board's mission has been to advance the quality of teaching and learning through a voluntary advanced certification. Today, more than ever, that mission is of even greater importance. For many of us, as long as we can remember, we wanted to be a teacher. The opportunities and challenges facing the teaching profession are like nothing we have experienced in generations. When each of you committed to the journey of National Board Certification, you accepted what a growing body of research told us. The National Board process transforms teaching, impacts student achievement, and enhances communities. You also showed us you have the courage and willingness to transform our education system. Your impact will be forever etched into the lives you touch, by the relationships you build and the opportunities you create. Thank you for what you have accomplished for yourselves, for your students, in your communities, and the teaching profession. And congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much, Peggy, for those inspiring remarks. We are so honored that you could join us today. Um, and I know it's a disappointment to everyone that we can't hear the applause or be in the same room as everyone, but um, we just are so grateful to these incredible education leaders to be with us. So next we will hear from Eddie Campbell, the president um, of the Kentucky Education Association. Um, Eddie is a middle and high school choir director from Knox County, currently on release to serve as president of the Kentucky Education Association. Eddie has been a vocal advocate for students, educators, and public schools throughout his teaching career. He has served on multiple committees at the local, state, and national levels. Currently, Eddie is a member of the KDE Continuing Education Task Force, a group focusing on educational issues during the COVID-19 global pandemic, and the NEA Task Force for Return to School. Eddie received his Bachelor of Arts in Music Education in 1996 and his Master of Arts in Education in 2000 from Union College in Barberville, Kentucky. Eddie received his National Board Certification in 2015 in the area of Music, Early Adolescence Through Young Adulthood. Eddie currently completed his um, 24th year of service to public education and is serving on the board of the Kentucky NBCT Network. Thank you so much, Eddie, for being here today to honor our new NBCTs. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate the, the, the introduction. Um, hello, National Board Certified Teachers. Congratulations. You know, a lot of us are always like, when will this day get here? Uh, like Sarah said, my name is Eddie Campbell. I am a middle and high school choir director from Knox County and serving as uh, president of the Kentucky Education Association. And I am a National Board Certified Teacher. Normally, when we are all together in the same place, I would ask us to stand up, take a deep breath, and repeat together, I am a National Board Certified Teacher. Unfortunately, since we can't be together today, I want you to say it in your own place. So everybody take a deep breath, say it, and own it. I am a National Board Certified Teacher. You deserve to take credit for this amazing honor. Becoming an NBCT is a transformative journey, a journey that may have began as a personal goal, but transformed into a journey for the students that you serve and teach each and every day. Now, having been through the process, uh, we know that that wasn't an easy journey at times. There's not a single person on here that's being honored today that didn't think that they wouldn't survive at some point. You spent hours writing, analyzing videos, writing some more, analyzing lessons, writing a little more, reflecting, writing, recording videos, editing, and then, and then you gave it to a mentor to read and give you feedback. What sane person does this? We do it. 
We do it for the love of being lifelong learners. We do it for the love of our profession. But most importantly, we do it to be the best teacher we can be for the students that we serve. Every step of the way, you grew, you transformed, you became stronger and more impactful and a more reflective educator, not just for yourself, but more importantly, for the many, many students that you will serve over your career. As educators, we are change agents. The lessons that you teach, the knowledge that you impart, the encouragement that you give, the things that you do for your students change your students' lives a little bit each and every day. Those little changes, they don't go away. They add up day after day, year after year, and before you know it, you've changed the life of that student. And when you change the life of a student, you are literally changing the world. It's said the end of a journey means the start of another one. This accomplishment, this recognition isn't the end of your journey. It's just the beginning. Now is the time to start your next journey, to take your newly found knowledge, your newly found power, and take that opportunity to lead your profession from your classroom. Mentor a new educator that's just beginning their career. Share your expertise with your colleagues. Lead a PLC or a project in your school. Mentor another on their journey to becoming nationally board certified. Lead a professional development. You are the expert. Take on a leadership role at your school or your district or at the state and shape policy. The possibilities are endless and you, you are the expert to lead our profession. Again, congratulations on your accomplishment of becoming a National Board Certified Teacher. And I want to personally thank you on behalf of the Kentucky Education Association and the many, many students that you serve for everything that you do each and every day. Have a wonderful journey and congratulations. Well, thank you so much, Eddie. We really appreciate your advocacy for our students and our teachers. We will now hear from one of our own Kentucky students and a truly outstanding young woman, Sophie Farmer. Sophie is a senior at the Carol Martin Gatton Academy for Mathematics and Science, the high school program for gifted students at WKU. Her passion for education equity has led to work with the Kentucky Student Voice Team, the Commissioner's Student Advisory C Council, and individual research at the Western Kentucky University. Sophie plans to pursue a career in secondary mathematics education, and she loves reading, cooking, and advocating. Welcome, Sophie. Hello, educators, policymakers, and newly certified NBCTs. I am Sophie Farmer, a senior at the Gatton Academy from Danville, Kentucky, and an aspiring educator. Education has been an integral part of my life. My mother is a national board certified teacher. Three of my grandparents were educators and learning has always been one of my greatest passions. I'm heavily involved in education equity work in my own life and I'm constantly reflecting on the education experiences of myself and of peers. Today, I represent students across the Commonwealth as I say congratulations and thank you for this momentous step in your professional careers. I want to share with you the power National Board Certified Teachers have to inspire their students, how student voice can transform your classroom, and my experiences with NBCTs that have shaped my current worldview. As a student, nothing is more refreshing than stepping into a classroom with a teacher that is passionate about their subject, 
Having a passionate teacher can completely alter a student's perspective on a subject, education system, and learning as a whole. Suddenly, a previously struggling student is excelling and passionate about a class they used to hate. School no longer feels meaningless and learning becomes fun. Throughout my years in public school, my favorite subject constantly flip-flopped to represent the classes I was most engaged in and involved in, which just so happened to have some of the most passionate educators I've ever met. While passion for subject matter is critical to ensuring student learning and engagement, there needs to be an equal passion for student well-being. Fostering relationships, checking in on students, and staying aware of unique student situations allows educators to truly connect to their students. When these aspects are present in a classroom, students feel seen and want to stay engaged because there's a mutual level of understanding and respect. It also helps students gain confidence to confirm their understanding and ask clarifying questions. The establishment of respect and care can transform an academic environment into a collaborative learning space where students feel comfortable taking ownership of their learning. These relationships built between students and teachers also carries outside of the direct classroom environment. Having a successful role model and mentor helps students grow as people. Growth in an education setting is talked about frequently. Student growth, teacher growth, and school growth. What sets the truly excellent teachers apart is their ever-present goal of improving their craft. From finding new lesson models to consulting other educators, learning more about effective teaching is at the center of each excellent educator. They understand they can still learn and that education is a living, breathing thing that should be molded and shaped as they grow as teachers. I believe that MBCTs inherently embody these traits. The dedication you have to your students and subject is tremendous. Your drive for self-improvement is endless, and your certification is proof of the skills you possess to be excellent educators. In my 12 years, I've had only a handful of MBCTs and candidates. Despite being few and far between in my own education experience, they've left direct impacts on how I view learning Mr. Gully, my seventh grade social studies teacher, was a pro at differentiation and taught me that learning isn't just listening. It is active involvement with subject matter through a variety of methods and materials. Ms. Calvert, my AP bio teacher, holds an unrivaled love for science and showed me how everything we encounter can be a tool for learning. Phone cords become protein structures and ping pong balls become atoms in her classroom. Ms. Shear, my freshman English teacher, cared about students like no other and showed me that teacher relationships extend outside academics. Her room was a safe space for all students, snacks for those that were hungry, a cool down room for those that were frustrated and the weekly meeting place for our Gender Sexuality Alliance. These teachers created meaningful learning spaces that fostered student growth academically, emotionally, and as individuals. They, like you, transformed the lives of their students and inspired me to pursue education. Not only do all of these teachers embody the traits I've previously mentioned, but also went above and beyond to encourage student agency and student voice in their classrooms. As a member of the Kentucky Student Voice Team and the Commissioner of Education Student Advisory Council, as well as a lifelong education activist, I am no stranger to ensuring my voice is heard in education decisions, but I must recognize my own privilege. My voice is always going to be heard because of my racial privilege, affluence, and distinction as a gifted student. Priority is placed on students like me. That's why it's critical that teachers encourage student voice at the ground level in the classroom. 
No teacher I've had has ever championed student voice like Ms. Cameron, my Algebra I teacher and NBCT candidate. Students not only give feedback in her classroom, but actively shape the learning. She teaches them how to take agency in their education and works to ensure that every student has a say in how they learn. Student voice is not tokenized in her classroom. It's an integral part of how lessons are designed. The National Board for Professional Teaching Standards has ensured that student agency is not limited to the classroom by allowing students to define how they experience and want to experience student voice. The summer between my sophomore and freshman year, I was given the opportunity to lead a team of students to analyze the national board standards for student agency. This work sparked discussions about what student agency looks like across disciplines and how effective teachers use it as a means for self-improvement. These standards make it clear how important the partnership and collaboration between teachers and students are and the intentional student review of these standards is student voice at the highest level. I've spent a great deal of time analyzing student voice and education, but this semester I've begun to analyze it through the lens of an educator and my introduction to inquiry-based teaching course at WKU. Simply put, effective teaching is hard. My own beliefs and misconceptions are constantly being challenged as I learn more from the perspective of an educator. While I am still a firm believer in the power of student voice, continuous learning, student-teacher relationships, and passion, I recognize that excellent teachers are made up of more than these tenets, and effective teaching is an ever-present goal. You've taken a giant leap toward that goal with your certification. As a student, I appreciate your dedication to your students and trying to become the best educators for them. As an aspiring educator, I commend your hard work and accomplishment. I am honored to speak to such incredible teachers who will continue to foster student agency, inspire learning, and impact students for the rest of their lives. You are not just teaching. You are also inspiring the next generation of educators, just as you were inspired by your own teachers and I was inspired by you. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you today and congratulations on becoming National Board Certified Teachers. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Sophie. We're so thrilled to hear that you're considering pursuing a career in education and are no doubt a future NBCT yourself. Today, we also want to recognize our renewed NBCTs. Renewing your National Board certification means that you keep the letters after your name if you're serving in your, um, it means you keep the letters after your name and if you're serving in your certification area at least 50% of the day as a teacher or an instructional coach, it means that you keep that salary supplement. But maintaining your certification means so much more than that. It means that you're committed to continuous growth in your practice. It means that you refuse to coast or get too comfortable in your career. It means that you have high expectations for yourself as well as for your students. It also means that you bring your experience and institutional knowledge to the larger education community and continue to lead in whatever role in which you serve. We appreciate your leadership in furthering accomplished teaching in Kentucky and we know that all the teachers who you lead and mentor are better for you having renewed your certification. Thank you. We would now like to move to our inaugural Kentucky NBCT Network Champion Awards. This year, the Kentucky NBCT Network Board elected to begin giving the annual Champion Award to two Kentuckians who have shown support for furthering our mission of spreading accomplished teaching to improve student learning in the Commonwealth. Each year, the recipients will be nominated and elected by the Kentucky NBCT Network members. This year, our network elected um, Governor Andy Bashir for his unwavering support. On the next slide.
Governor Andy Beshear for his unwavering support of public education and a budget proposal that ensures our students will continue to receive a world-class education here in Kentucky. Thank you and congratulations, Governor. This year, our network um, also elected Representative James A. Tipton from Taylorsville and representing District 53 of Kentucky for his leadership and proposed legislation of House Bill 271. This legislation would make national board certification accessible to early career educators, embed national board resources in teacher preparation, and make Kentucky a national leader for such an early entry program. Thank you, Representative Tipton, for supporting national board friendly policy that will directly benefit student outcomes and help us grow a stronger Kentucky. Is um, Lieutenant Governor Coleman in attendance yet? No, I don't believe so, Sarah. Okay. Um, in that case, we can move to the next slide as we wait for her. And then when she comes, we will introduce her to the Lieutenant Coleman slide, Lieutenant Governor. Um, so I can speak to you today a little bit about um, the network and the power of joining the Kentucky National Board Network. It is a group of nearly, um, I think we just passed the 250 membership mark, um, 250 Kentucky NBCTs and supporters who have come together to support accomplished teaching in the Commonwealth. We work um, with various organizations, we work with legislators, we work with policymakers, the Kentucky Department of Education, and we work with other networks across the country um, to find new ways to better support um, accomplished teaching across the Commonwealth. Because we believe that students should be at the center of everything we do, and that accomplished teaching um, really comes through from engaging with those national board resources. So we want to engage as many people as possible in the national board certification process because that's really something that can um, ultimately be life-changing. It certainly was transformative for my own career. When I was initially um, considering board certification, I'd been teaching for more than a decade and, um, you know, was pretty was feeling pretty comfortable in my practice. Um, I wasn't really getting as much out of professional learning anymore. Um, you know, felt pretty confident, like I knew what I was doing. When I um, began national board certification, however, when I engaged in the process, I realized I had so much more to learn. And um, it was incredibly challenging. Back then we did, um, you know, all the components in one year and took that we had four portfolio components and took the test. And it was um, one of the most challenging years of my career, but it was also one of the most rewarding in the end because I grew as a teacher and I grew as a person. Um, I was better able to um, make those really nimble in time student specific decisions, not just after the fact when I was planning for the next day's instruction or reading assessment data and making decisions about how to help students master standards, but actually in the moment, in the classroom, I was better able to meet my students where they were and um, to meet their needs. So it's certainly been transformative for me and I know it's been really powerful for many others, which is what inspired me to take up the work of the Kentucky NBCT network. Um, joining the National Board Network was great because I immediately was connected to so many other NBCTs who have chosen not just to get their certification and stop, but to continue to lead in Kentucky. Um, and initially, just as a member, I was you know just interested in connecting with people. And then I decided to join a committee and I joined the Public Relations and Communications Committee. Um, and in that work, we really try to spread the message um, on social media and through various other channels to share the work that we're doing as Kentucky NBCTs. Um, from there, I was nominated um, by more than one person to run for president this year, or rather last year, and elected. Um, did not know that we would be you know, dealing with this pandemic and it's really changed things, 
but we are excited regardless to be able to um, put together this virtual ceremony for you today to honor your incredible, incredible achievements. Um, I'd love to hear from some of our other network members while we wait for the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor to join us. If anyone would like to share their story about why be being a Kentucky NBCT network member is um, powerful for them. Who wants to step up and share the stage? Gianna? How are you everyone? And I'm so glad to be in, um, with you here today and honored um, to join you in getting recognized. So one of the things that the uh, National Board um, Network allows for us is to communicate um, with teachers all across the Commonwealth and share with you opportunities how you can lead um, your colleagues and support them um, also in pursuing a national board. It also um, gives us an opportunity to build each other and learn from each other and just share innovative ideas that we are doing throughout the Commonwealth. One of the things that the network has done for us this season, of course, is to keep us informed um, on policies that affect us as educators so that we can advocate um, for um, teachers, educators, um, our students and our schools. And so it has been an honor to serve you. Holly, I don't know if you'd like to share a little bit about um, how the network started when you uh, were the founder, I think about five years ago. Hi, everyone. What a nice ceremony so far. I'm really enjoying all of the speakers. It's very inspiring, even though I've renewed uh, and getting ready to renew again. I've been a National Board Certified Teacher for a good while now. Hearing uh, people talk about the impact of National Board Certification just inspires me all over again. It makes me proud and just so glad that I took that step to become a National Board Certified Teacher. And I think you'll find that too, that it's kind of just a next step and it leads to all kinds of other opportunities. And that's sort of what happened with the network. Honestly, uh, Suzanne Farmer, who is also on the call today, she, sh she could speak to this also, but uh, through the a, a grant that we were working with, Suzanne was the director of the NT3 grant. It was a grant about transforming education. And through that grant, we uh, kind of evolved into building this bridge to a network. We found the need to kind of mobilize and energize all of the NBCTs in the state. So we kind of connected those two things together and she really helped so much with all of that. And so some of it was in the beginning, just getting the, the paperwork and those kinds of the hoops that you have to jump through to start an organization. But once we got rolling, it was very exciting to see teachers join and kind of just when you put net, you know, NBCTs together in a room, whether it's virtual or a real room, so many ideas start to flow. And it's just been really exciting to be on the in the beginning stage of that and just watch how it has grown and snowballed and how much of an impact a, a group of teachers can have. Thanks so much, Holly. Suzanne? Yes, um, thanks, um, Holly, for speaking a little bit about the history of this work. Um, one of the other pieces that I think part of being in that um, network to transform teaching work and learning about networks that has been really powerful and, and not everyone gets to see this maybe firsthand is that there are a lot of networks across the country 
And as being a part of a network that's affiliated with National Board, we get to connect with National Board certified teachers across the whole country and learn from those other NBC networks as well. We're connected directly with um, opportunities and resources with the National Board and also this larger national community of teachers that have engaged with the National Board resources. Um, so I think that our state and our teachers have really benefited in this short time that we've had our network um, from all of those great other NBCTs, um, the relationship with National Board and the relationships um, within our state and across our country. Well, when I know when I first met you, Suzanne, um, many years, I don't know how many years ago, but several years ago, you were just beginning that work with NT3 and, um, you know, really spreading the opportunities for NBCTs after certification um, in Kentucky. And it's just been such an inspiration to work with you and Holly and everyone in the network because it really is the beginning of your, it really can be the beginning of your leadership rather than, you um, you know, the end. It is like such a high achievement, but it's just a foot in the door to so many more opportunities. Um, and so we appreciate all the work that you both have done to make that um, possible here in Kentucky. All right. Does um, Do we know if the lieutenant governor and governor are on? They were, I just heard they were going to be joining us right at two o'clock. I think they are on. I am here. Wonderful. So we now well are honored to welcome Lieutenant Governor um, Jacqueline Coleman to the stage. She is an educator, basketball coach, writer, and founder of a nonprofit. Jacqueline's leadership does not end in the classroom or on the court. Her experience as an alumna of Emerge Kentucky drove her to found her own nonprofit, Lead Kentucky, in 2013. Lead Kentucky ensures Kentucky's college women are prepared, encouraged, and empowered to seek leadership positions on their campuses and later in their professional fields. Since its inception, LEAD Kentucky has empowered 50 campus ambassadors with 29 different majors on more than a dozen college campuses. Most recently, Jacqueline served as an assistant principal at Nelson County High School. She is currently pursuing a doctor in educational leadership at the University of Kentucky. And while we missed her at our ceremony last year, we know it was for the best reason and we love seeing all the beautiful photos of you and your daughter on social media. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor Coleman. Well, thank you so much. And, and first, let me begin by saying that I appreciate this mask so much that was sent to me, uh, the National Board Certified Teacher Mask. Um, and I, I can't wait to, to continue to wear it. So thank you all so much for um, that nice little gift. So first of all, good afternoon. And, and congratulations to all of Kentucky's newest National Board Certified Teachers. Uh, you know, as a teacher, I know how stressful this year has been on top of the stress that teachers normally uh, deal with. Um, the pandemic that we have experienced has forced us to adapt and to make sacrifices. And I am proud to say that our schools have met this challenge with courage and compassion. COVID-19 might be unprecedented, but the work being done by all of you is not. Teachers have gone beyond the bounds of their duties to make sure no child goes without food, support, and learning in their homes. And each day you have faced uncertainty and have been asked to adapt on the fly. This is no easy task, but you have risen to it at every single turn. And you all in particular have taken an even greater step in building a world-class education system for our kids. National Board Certification is an incredible accomplishment, and it means more at a time like this. It shows that Kentucky is not only moving forward towards an education system that works for all of our families, it means that we're also doing it in the midst of a pandemic when our families need us the most. It says a lot about each of you individually that you are fantastic teachers. And it says a lot about you as a group that our Commonwealth has this level of talented, committed teacher leaders. Not only are you exceptional for proving your dedication to our children during a global health pandemic, you are also part of a movement strengthening our schools for generations to follow. 
This virus hasn't changed our priorities. If anything, it has strengthened them. Our work may continue to look a little different for a while, but our goals remain the same. Governor Bashir and I are committed to making sure that Kentucky teachers and students have the support they need through this pandemic and long after it's over. So let's continue the good work we've already begun. Let's continue to invest in Kentucky's most valuable resource, our kids. I'm excited for the future of public education in Kentucky because we have people like you that are dedicating their lives to it. Because of you, our classrooms, our communities, and our Commonwealth are stronger. Thank you so much for everything that you do, for going above and beyond, and congratulations for this amazing achievement. And I really hope to see you all in person very soon. Thank you so much, um, Lieutenant Governor. We are so honored to have a teacher at such a high level of leadership in Kentucky. We are now honored and humbled to welcome our keynote speaker, Governor Andy Bashir. Governor Andy Bashir, the 63rd governor of Kentucky, grew up in Fayette, Franklin, and Clark counties and graduated from Henry Clay High School. He is the son of Steve and Jane Bashir, the 61st governor and first lady of Kentucky. Along the way, they instilled in Andy the teachings of Andy's grandfather, a Baptist minister from Dawson Springs, Kentucky, including the values of family, faith, and public service. Governor Bashir has been an ardent supporter of public education, our teachers, and most importantly, our students. With the courage and tenacity to lead during the most challenging and unpredictable time of recent memory, Governor Bashir has been a brave leader in the face of adversity and one who continues to put the well-being of the people of our Commonwealth first. We are so grateful for your leadership, Governor, and truly honored and humbled that you have taken the time today to celebrate and recognize another group of Kentuckians who have stepped forward to lead and service of Kentucky's young people during this pandemic and all the challenge, challenges that it has posed, our new NBCTs. So thank you, Governor Bashir. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Andy. I'm normally Jacqueline Coleman's warm-up act, but today it looks like uh, uh, I'm going second. I want to start by thanking Sarah Host, uh, Sarah Yost. I'm sorry, Sarah Crystal Culp, and their entire team for prioritizing everybody's health and hosting this recognition ceremony virtually. But what do we expect? Our teachers and their organizations step up every single time to do the right thing and today is no exception. You are always willing to sacrifice to ensure that other people are getting the best results in their education, in their health, and so many other areas. So today, you're just living out the values that you otherwise live every other day. I know that this has been a tough year, but we've got so many reasons right now to be optimistic. There's a light at the end of this dark tunnel and it's only getting brighter. Right now, we're administering the safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines faster each week than the federal government can supply us those doses. And we've prioritized our educators in getting vaccinated. So we're gonna sprint out of this pandemic in 2021. But remember, until everybody else around you is vaccinated, we need people to be patient and vigilant. Continue to mask up and maintain social distance. Avoid crowds and practice good hygiene. And if you weren't, among the tens of thousands of educators who are already being vaccinated, please make a plan to get the vaccine, your shot of hope, uh, when your turn comes. I was so honored a year ago this week to present each of the new recipients with their pens from the national board. And I loved uh, that day. Uh, the energy that we all had was uh, special and I'm smiling at just, just remembering it. And so I wish I was able to present each of you with a pen this year, personally to honor not only your accomplishment of obtaining the highest certification in your profession, that's pretty great, the very highest, uh, but all of you educators that have gone above and beyond for Kentucky's children during this last year. While this last year has been different, your accomplishment is even more extraordinary. I'm honored and excited to be with you to recognize our newly minted National Board Certified Teachers and those renewing their certification. This is a great personal achievement for you as educators and for your career. And on behalf of the Commonwealth of Kentucky and your governor, I'm really proud of you. But it's much more than that. It shows your deep commitment to your calling and to your students, Kentucky's children. 
and continuing learners. In just a moment, I'm gonna be signing a proclamation naming today, February 11th, 2021, as National Board Certified Teacher Day. So say, take that to the ice storm. That's not getting the day, you are. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for all you've done over an extremely challenging year. If you've heard me speak at all, you've heard me say that my administration is foremost in education first administration. The importance of educators and education is at the core of my values, of Jacqueline's values, of this entire administration's values. Education's how we prepare our people to be leaders in the post-COVID economy. It's how we work to redress historic inequities and inequalities. Education is central to how we build the better Kentucky that we all want. In the best of times and in the best of circumstances, the work you do is already so challenging. During this pandemic, your commitment to Kentucky's kids and continuing learners has been nothing short of heroic. You stepped in in so many ways, quickly setting up remote learning, working to ensure our children had access to technology so they didn't fall behind, and making sure students who rely on schools for nutrition stayed fed. The entire Commonwealth owes you all a debt of gratitude, but also, importantly, we owe you our respect and our full support. My administration has been working hard to represent you and your interests. Education is central to my Better Kentucky Budget proposal, which unveiled last month. It includes $1,000 raises for all school employees and historic investments in school construction and in broadband expansion. And we prioritize our educators in COVID-19 vaccinations. And we're gonna be amongst the, we're, we're, we're one of the few states that has done that, but we are gonna be the fastest state to provide both doses to our educators in this entire country. That's because you are essential. You are essential to our children. You are essential to our parents, as this parents of, of an 11 and a 10 year old could tell you. But you're also essential to our plans to sprint out of this pandemic and claim our spot as a leader in the post COVID world. We want all our schools open as quickly as possible, but it must be done safely. So we're vaccinating educators quickly and we'll continue to advocate for the resources necessary to get our children safely back to in-person instruction. This week, we'll finish the first dose of vaccines for the very last part of the more than 85,000 K through 12 educators and education support personnel who voluntarily agreed to be vaccinated. Thank you to our educators who again set an example and you rolled up your sleeves. And with that, I have the honor of signing this proclamation. This proclamation is by me, Andy Bashir, Governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And it reads, whereas the Commonwealth deeply appreciates the work of its teachers and has relied on their noble effort to educate present and future generations. And whereas a select group of 82 teachers achieved and 68 teachers renewed national board certification in December, 2020. And whereas national board certification is a rigorous and demanding process requiring nearly 400 hours of planning, analysis, and reflection of one's practice. And whereas voluntary teacher participation is a profound statement of their passion for students and their commitment to improve education. And whereas the national board certification is recognized as the gold standard in teacher certification is based on higher standards for teachers, which means better learning for the students of Kentucky. Now, therefore, I, Andy Bashir, Governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, do hereby proclaim today, February 11th, 2021, as National Board Certified Teacher Day in Kentucky, done at the Capitol in the city of Frankfort on this 11th day of February in the year of our Lord, 2021, in the 229th year of the Commonwealth, by me as governor. Hey, this is in honor of all of you. Congratulations. Congratulations. We are really proud of you. So once again, I wanna to congratulate today's honorees, 150 Kentucky teachers achieving or recredentialed as national board certification. Your achievement is an investment in yourselves and our entire Commonwealth. So proud of all of you. Remember this time we're in, we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through it together and you are a huge part of it. Thanks for what you do every day, every year. But thanks for being a, a big part of Team Kentucky and getting us through this pandemic. Congratulations.
Thank you so much for your uplifting words, Governor Bashir, and thank you again for your service and your leadership. Now we move to recognize and honor each of our new NBCTs for this incredible achievement. We know how the pandemic has meant your certification process was complicated and more challenging even than it is for um, previous candidates. Um, we know this pandemic has meant that we cannot celebrate together at the Capitol, shake the governor's hand, receive our pins in person, or take that iconic photo on the steps of the rotunda. That said, when it is safe to gather in person, we do plan to invite you back to Frankfurt to celebrate again, to receive your pins, and to take our photo. Until then, we will honor you by reading your names, certification areas, and districts. So I believe that's, um, trying to find Jana. Oh, you're good. And then I, and then I think it begins on slide 13 whenever we find Jana. Yes, she should be made a presenter. Okay, great. All right. So we will alternate back and forth reading your names. Sam Aguiar, NBCT, Mathematics, Adolescence, and Young Adulthood from Jefferson County Public Schools. And you can just click to the next slide after we read each name. Sarah Acreage, Social Studies, History, Adolescent, and Young Adulthood, Bullitt County Public Schools. Laura Aubrey, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Alice Barrett, NBCT, World Languages, Early Adolescent through Young Adulthood, Fayette County Public Schools. Laura Bingham, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood from Bell County Schools. Brianna Blair, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood, Bell County Schools. Karen Botts, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts and Middle Childhood from Fayette County Public Schools. Stephen Buckholtz, NBCT, Science, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Shelly Buck, NBCT, Generalist, Middle Childhood from Monroe County Schools. Rachel Bergen, NBCT, Library Media, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood, Henry County Public Schools. Susan Butcher, NBCT, Generalist Early Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Lynn Campbell, NBCT, Science, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Oldham County Schools. Paula Cantu, NBCT, Generalist Early Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Kara Caldill, NBCT, Generalist Early Childhood, Oldham County Schools. Stephanie Cheatham, NBCT, Mathematics Early Adolescence from Oldham County Schools. Katie Carell, NBCT, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Woodford County Schools. Kaylee Crowder, NBCT, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Greene County Schools. 
Elizabeth Darcy, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Fayette County Public Schools. Abby Dennison, NBCT, English Language Arts, Early Adolescence from Jefferson County Public Schools. Charity Divine, NBCT, English Language Arts, Adolescent and Youth Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Catherine Dill, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Spencer County Schools. Jennifer Fainan, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood, Oldham County Schools. Nancy Farmer, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Oldham County Schools. Kelly Fiorini, NBCT, English Language Arts, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Oldham County Schools. Nikki Fisher, NBCT, English Language Arts, Adolescents and Young Adulthood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Frances Fisher, NBCT, Mathematics, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Patricia Fitzpatrick, NBCT, Career and Technical Education, Early Adolescence Through Young Adulthood from Woodford County Schools. Mallory Fotts, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Fayette County Public Schools. Katherine Fremholt, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood Through Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Stacy Goggins, NBCT, ARP, Early and Middle Childhood, Jesmond County Schools. Whitney Gray, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Marie Griffin, MBCT, World Languages, Early Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Sacred Heart Academy. Lori Halfling, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Jennifer Hamilton, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Bowling Green Independent Schools. Ashley Hazelton, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood from Oldham County Schools. Matthew Haynes, NBCT, Career and Technical Education, Early Adolescent through Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Lindsay Henley, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Megan Hildebrand, NBCT, Mathematics, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Stephanie Hohensey, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Fayette County Public Schools. Sarah Horton, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Vivian Hubs, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood from Sacred Heart Model School. Jamie Hutchison, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood, Wayne County Schools. Shaylee Ice, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Svetlana Jacobs, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Early Young Adulthood, 
Fayette County Public Schools. Sharon Jacobs, NBCT, Mathematics Early Adolescence from Oldham County Schools. Caleb Johnson, NBCT, Science, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Judy Johnson, NBCT, English Language Arts, Adolescents and Young Adulthood from Casey County Schools. Tanya Jones, NBCT, Mathematics, Early Adolescent, McCrary County Schools. Amanda Joyner, NBCT, Science, Adolescence, and Young Adulthood from Henderson County Schools. Julie Ulick, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Oldham County Schools. Jill Justice, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood from Beechwood Independent Schools. Ashley Kalen, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Jefferson County Public Schools. April Keelan, NBCT, Music, Early and Middle Childhood from Carter County Schools. Alyssa Keller, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Tangie Kelsey, NBCT, Science, Adolescent and Young Adulthood from Oldham County Schools. Lindsay Kiefer, NBCT, Generalist, Middle Childhood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Molly Lang, NBCT, English as a New Language, Early Adolescence through Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Stephanie Lawson, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Floyd County Schools. Amy Leeskang, NBCT, Mathematics, Early Adolescence from Bullock County Schools. Stacey May, NBCT, English Language Arts, Early Adolescent, Rowan County Schools. Reagan Miller, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Sarah, I apologize. You're going to have to do the next one because okay. I didn't get to see the advanced slide. Angela Mounts, NBCT, Library, Media, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood. Jefferson County Public Schools. Freddie Napier, NBCT, Mathematics, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Pike County Schools. Julie Neese, NBCT, Physical Education, Early and Middle Childhood from Boone County Schools. Leah Newberry, NBCT, Physical Education, Early and Middle Childhood, Oldham County Schools. Tina O'Hare, NBCT, English Language Arts, Early Adolescence from Menifee County Schools. Michael Payne, NBCT, Music, Early Adolescent through Young Adulthood. Fayette County Schools. Jennifer Payne, NBCT, Science, Early Adolescence from Davis County Schools. Karen Ray, NBCT, Physical Education, Early and Middle Childhood, Fayette County Public Schools. Hannette Rivers, NBCT, 
Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Russell Independent Schools. Olivia Roberts, NBCT, Exceptional Needs Specialist, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Sarah Robinson, NBCT, Library Media, Early Childhood through Young Adulthood from Jefferson County Public Schools. Brooke Smith, NBCT, Generalist, Early Childhood, Jefferson County Public Schools. Misty Stanley, NBCT, Mathematics, Early Adolescence from McCracken County Schools. Vanessa Stevens, NBCT Science, Adolescent and Young Adulthood, Russell Independent Schools. Joshua Sullivan, NBCT, Social Studies, History, Early Adolescence, Owensboro Independent Schools. Amy Taphouse, NBCT, Science, Early Adolescent, Beechwood Independent Schools. Rachel Wal Walters, NBCT, World Languages, Early Adolescence Through Young Adulthood from Sacred Heart Academy. Angela Wheeler, NBCT, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Monroe County Schools. Kelly White, NBCT, Career and Technical Education, Early Adolescence Through Young Adulthood from Hancock County Schools. Meg Wiersma, NBCT, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, McCracken County Schools. Sarah Willoughby, NBCT, Literacy, Reading, Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood from Carter County Schools. James Wright, NBCT Music, Early Adolescent Through Young Adulthood, Scott County Schools. Rebecca Wynn, NBCT, English Language Arts, Adolescence and Young Adulthood from Harlan, County, Harlan Independent Schools. Gabrielle Yakering, NBCT, Literacy, Reading Language Arts, Early and Middle Childhood, Davis County Public Schools. Thank you to our new NBCTs and congratulations again on this incredible accomplishment for our profession and our students. Wish you could hear your applause. <laughs> We will now move to our panel on accomplished NBCTs who are also accomplished leaders in education. We are lucky to have a group of our new NBCTs live with us today on our platform, and they will have a chance to ask questions of our panelists who are all NBCTs themselves who have gone above and beyond in their leadership. Holly Bloodworth is a national board certified teacher and was the 2014 Kentucky Teacher of the Year and currently serves on the Kentucky Board of Education. She taught primary students for 30 years in the Murray Independent Schools and was a literacy consultant with West, with, um, West Kentucky Educational Cooperative and is currently a full-time faculty member at Murray State University teaching the College of Education and Human Services. Holly is the founder and first past, past, excuse me, first past president of the Kentucky NBC Team Network and currently serves as our treasurer. She worked with the Kentucky Network to Transform Teaching, or NT3, and as a teacher leader on special assignment with the Kentucky Department of Education. Holly also co-directs the Kentucky Reading Project through Murray State University and supports teachers pursuing national board certification. Holly also serves the community of Murray in many ways, such as serving as a board member for the Ethics Commission and in community theater. She also distributes books in the summer in the park. Dr. Erica, Dr. Erica Collins-Norfleet, certified as an NBCT in 2003, 
and renewed her certification in 2013. She has held numerous school, district, and community-based professional roles, including leading and piloting STEAM, robotics, and Girls Who Code programs, serving as a national board mentor and leadership trainer, the Women in School Administration Mentoring Chair, on the Black Achievers Scholarship and Parent Advisory Committee, and as past president of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. She also serves as an ad hoc professor at Simmons College in Kentucky. Most recently, she served on the committee for the scholarship for Jefferson County Public Schools teachers of color to pursue national board certification and the scholarship is named in her honor. Dr. Collins also currently serves as the behavior interventionist at McFerrin Elementary in Jefferson County Public Schools and is a member of the Kentucky NBCT network. Suzanne Farmer achieved national board certification as an early childhood generalist in 2004 while teaching preschool and renewed her certification while working as a mathematics interventionist. In 2012, Suzanne received the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. Suzanne served as the director of the Kentucky Network to Transform T Teaching, or KYNT3, the grant project that innovated using national board resources for professional learning from 2014 to 2018. In that role, Suzanne was a liaison with the national, state, and local partners, including the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards Organization. Suzanne is now the principal of Hogsett Primary in the Danville Independent Schools, a national board professional learning school. Suzanne has experience using national board resources across stakeholder groups and created the National Board Standards Studies documents, which are now used nationally. Suzanne currently serves on the board of directors for the KYNBCT network. And Dr. Lynn Hines was the first national board certified teacher in the state of Kentucky, earning her certificate in the area of early adolescence, English language arts in 1995. She was also the first to renew and the first to renew for a second time. She is currently a professional in residence in the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences at Western Kentucky University, where now Hines will be dedicating 100% of her time to work to the work of the National Board as district liaison, recruitment, support, and NBPTS graduate course work development. Hines has lobbied for state teacher incentives and initiatives, was a member of the Committee to Develop a Manual for Candidate Support, served as an MBPTS trainer for candidate support providers nationwide, has provided support services for over 3,000 NBPTS candidates, and acts as a consultant and liaison with state and national school districts. Of note, Dr. Hines wrote a workbook for candidates called A Toolkit for Success that went into a third edition and has been used in many states. Currently, Dr. Hines chairs the Candidate Support and Recruitment Committee for the Kentucky NBCT Network. To ask questions of our panelists today, please use the raised hand feature located at either the top or the bottom of your screen um, in Microsoft Teams when you move your mouse. We will watch um, the participants list for raised hands and try to adhere to the order in which they are raised. I'll do my best. And then when we call on you, please unmute and tell us your name, your district, who on the panel your question is for, um, whether it's for an individual one of our panelists or for the whole group, and then ask the panelists your question. So the first question for our panelists is, how do you stay relevant? How do you make sure that you stay fresh and keep a close pulse on the current realities of teaching in whatever role you currently serve? We'll start with Holly, then move to Erica, Suzanne, and Lynn. That's a great question because I am retired now from actually teaching in an elementary classroom. And so that's really important to me to stay connected and relevant. And I'm amazed at how fast you can kind of lose touch with what's going on. I'm very lucky to have found a position at Murray State University where I'm teaching in the College of Education and Human Services because I have practicum students and student teachers. And so that actually gets me out into classrooms all throughout Western Kentucky. So that's the main way that I stay in touch. Hello. So the way that I stay relevant and connected is because I stay um, a mentor to those who are seeking national board certification. So I'm constantly reviewing all of the different standards with my candidates and also 
in the school that I currently work in, I stay connected and relevant because I'm working with teachers on their standards and the best practices, continually going to workshops and conventions to learn what's new out there in innovative ways to make sure that our students achieve at high levels. Hi, um, I stay relevant or try to by again staying as connected with students as possible. Um, we know that that's at the core of all impact or everything that we should be striving for is impact for students. So as a principal, um, I work as closely with students as I can um, by coaching teachers and um, staying connected with with families and students directly um, and continuing to just try to reflect and analyze my practice using all of the muscle that we've learned as National Board Certified Teachers in this role to keep thinking about how I need to continue to learn and grow and then seeking out opportunities through the networks that we've created um, and other teachers either within my school or educators and other parts of the state or the country through social media or professional organizations and just trying to stay connected to the opportunities that are available. And Lynn, I want to apologize for my picture not showing. Uh, there's been some uh, problems with me and internet lately. I stay relevant working with National Board teachers, and I get to look into their classrooms through their commentaries, their videos, their student work. The last few years, though, I've been working in a clinical model, so I was actually in a school with uh, pre-service teachers prior to student teaching. And fortunately, I have been able to keep in contact with many of them and hearing um, the loops they're going through to provide students with good teaching through apps in a hybrid teaching. So I really feel like I miss seeing real live K-12 students, but I feel like I'm seeing them virtually. Thank you all so much. Um, so again, for our teachers who are on the platform, if you would just use the raise hand feature and then you can unmute, tell us your name and your district who the question is for and whether it's for um, the whole group or if you just want to direct it at an individual and let us know your question. So um, previously, this question was submitted for Holly. Um, Holly, as you know, is a KBE member. How do you broaden your vision for what works in education when our various districts across the Commonwealth are so diverse? Well, that is a, a difficult task at times. I live in rural Western Kentucky and my 32 years of classroom experience are actually in a more rural setting. So to really connect with the teachers that are in more urban setting, I, I have to be kind of strategic about that. Um, I'm a member of a lot of different networks and through my work with the Kentucky Teacher of the Year program, I've made a lot of good friends and I reach out to them routinely for different things and connect with their classrooms. Also through the Kentucky Reading Project, that's a, a statewide uh, program and it kind of goes through the eight regional universities. So I really have connected with teachers all across the state that way. I also depend on the people in my area to contact me as far as my Kentucky Board of Education work and I am, you know, very open to people emailing me or calling me and talking to me about issues that are going on in their situation, because there's really not a way for me to know exactly what's going on unless you're reaching out to me, too. So it's kind of two way communication. Thank you, Holly. Um, Lynn. How do you prepare your um, teachers while using the National Board resources at Western Kentucky University? We have incorporated many of the resources that National Board has available on their website, which is a plethora 
of information that is just so strong and so relevant. Uh, we have made Google Classrooms and separated out the information and tried to connect that to each of the components. So we actually go through it uh, through Zoom meetings and discuss it and answer questions as best we can or refer them to the National Board helpline if we don't know the answer. But the uh, information on National Board's website is just amazing. I think that's all. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Um, for Erica, how do you manage to continue to lead and grow your own practice from the classroom at the same time? So the five core propositions is essential to my growth. And so lean, when I use those and I talk about being committed to students and their learning, not only am I committed to my students and their learning, I'm also committed to teachers and their learning. So I'm always promoting national board. And in order to do that, I have to lead by example. So I constantly reflect on my teaching, reflect on this and learn about the new the subjects that I teach in order to enhance student achievement, work on building communities within the school, especially with the new teachers. We have a lot of new teachers to come into the building. So building those relationships with them, talk to them about their day-to-day -day lessons. And so while I'm helping others, I'm also growing at the same time. Thank you, Dr. Collins. Um, for Suzanne, how do you use National Board resources um, in professional learning with the teachers at Hogsett Primary? Thanks, Sarah. That's a great question. So um, one of the interesting learnings that came out of the Network to Transform Teaching was that we learned that we didn't want teachers to wait to engage with the National Board resources when they decided that they wanted to pursue um, National Board certification and were eligible. There are a lot of great teachers out there that aren't yet eligible for certification because they don't have enough years under their belt, or it might not be the right time in their life to decide to pursue board certification. Um, we all know that when we read those standards the first time and we read the What Teachers Should Know and Be Able to Do book, that we felt that affirmation. And someone who was like us um, that has walked in our shoes was giving us the words that would help to um, center our, our growth. It's a great tool for re personal reflection and to set goals for what your next steps are. At the same time, it's an overwhelming amount of information. Um, you all have just become masters of that as newly certified board certified teachers. But um, to imagine trying to find a way to dip your toe into that information instead of drowning in the pool, um, uh, we really had to play with that. So um, some of the recent examples, um, my school just spent some time going through a collective reflection of our learning from trying to transform our teaching during COVID. So we all know we don't wanna, no one wished that this would happen to us, but a lot of great learning has come out of this horrible situation. Um, we've had to think differently about the way that we work together and the way that we engage families and we engage students. And in doing that, um, to focus our conversation, I look to quotes from the standards, from the areas that our teachers were teaching around our reflection standards. Um, we also look to quotes from the National Board's um, What Teachers Should Know and Be Able to Do book. So we pulled some quotes around reflection to really get us thinking about um, how we were going to do that work together before we started. So it can be a really great way to anchor that practice. We've also looked at Atlas cases together to um, analyze our practice. We've used Atlas cases to hire teachers and our assistant principal um, where they're asked to um, analyze um, a teacher's uh, 
craft and what feedback would you give that colleague or a teacher um, to see if if the teachers are able to think on their feet in that way. So um, we've really had to get, there's a great network of people that are doing that work. So you don't have to figure that out on your own. If you're interested in that, you can absolutely contact us at the network and we can give you some ideas of how to dip your toe into those resources as a school or with your colleagues. Thanks, Suzanne. That's so inspiring because I feel like it would bring so many more teachers in to the National Board Certification process and continue to grow the teachers who are already MBCTs or those who, you know, may choose not to pursue. Everyone gets better from that work. Um, so, may I add to that? This is Lynn. Uh, I was so glad to hear Suzanne talking about the PD because we have been spending a lot of time incorporating the National Board standards into pre-service courses and into graduate classes. Uh, so teachers coming into service will be well prepared and understand the standards because the National Board standards are so rich in explaining what an accomplished teacher looks like. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, oh, no, you're perfect. <laughs> Go ahead, Holly. Well, I was just gonna add to that our pre-service teachers are not able to go out and do visits to schools right now, the ones that are supposed to be observing. So we're using Atlas cases. And in some ways, I find it a much richer experience because they have the commentary. And so as they read the commentary as freshmen, uh, you know, in their first class of, you know, getting into teacher education, you know, into the teacher education field. And so they're you know, reading like the behind the scenes of what this teacher was thinking and how she prepared or he prepared and seeing evidence of how well this teacher knows their students. And I just think it's a really great experience for these teachers and it sets the bar high for them from the very beginning as to the level of reflection and analysis that's part of teaching. So for those who may be watching who don't know, Atlas is a database of high scoring national board portfolio entries um, that includes the video portion of the film lesson that NBCT submitted back when they were going through the process themselves. And as Holly was saying, the written commentary where they talk about um, all the decisions they made in the planning and delivery and re reflection after that lesson, um, why they made those decisions and how they impacted students. So um, because national board has made this available to um, subscribers. Um, those of us who use Atlas are able to show those videos to candidates, pre-service teachers, um, or faculty, as our um, panelists have been sharing, and then begin to engage in that same sort of in-depth reflection um, that you go through during the national board process. Um, Erica, have you used um, Atlas with, your, with the candidates that you work with as a PLF, as a professional learning facilitator? Yes, I use Atlas with my with my candidates and they found it really beneficial being able to not only see because when you're videoing, they think that all the lessons have to be perfect and they want to keep videoing over and over again. And so it allowed them to see that it's authentic teaching when you look at these videos. Um, and so they were better to, uh, able to understand when they are doing their writing pieces and when they're video and then seeing how other teachers are viewed. Also, to piggyback on it, I'm not sure uh, which of the panelists talked about the things that teachers should be able to know and do. I've shared that with some of the new teachers at McFerrin this year because being in this virtual world, they're constantly questioning their craft because this is their first year teaching. And so I have shared that with some of the new teachers that I work with, especially on the fifth grade, who are going to seek national board certification once they get, get all of their years in. And so those are great resources. However, I hadn't used Atlas with them, but I think that that's an awesome idea. And I'll, I'll think, and I will use that with the new teachers along with my candidates. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And if anyone's listening and is interested in doing this work, as Suzanne said, the network has lots of resources to get you started. Um, okay, the next question is, 
what was the most powerful moment of your career, would you say? The most powerful moment of your career. Maybe after national board certification? I was gonna say the one of the one of the most powerful events in my career is when I achieved national board certification the first time. Um, I just felt like I was an accomplished teacher and that the things that I was doing in my classroom was what was what was best for students and their achievement, making sure that they could achieve at high levels. But then the second um, highest accomplishments when I was able to recertify because just like the first certification, the recertification I think was more important because I was like, oh my God, am I still doing the right things for students in the classroom? So when I was able to recertify, I think that may have been the, the highest. I think when I went to the post office the first time, you have to understand this, you know, when I certified was the last century. And I went to the post office and the letter was there explaining that I had uh, become national board certified. And when my principal said, you know, that thing you've got. And I realized at that point I needed to make my little elevator speech to start explaining to everybody what national board certification was all about. I think the second was when um, I was directing the state national board program and I worked myself out of a job. We ran out of money because we had so many national board teachers coming on board at that time. And it was such a rewarding experience to tell myself I was fired and uh, know it was because we had so many good teachers out there in the classroom. I think um, my most powerful moment as a teacher, I mean, of course, you know, submitting the box and, and getting the notification that you are, but when I think what was my most powerful moment, I think back to a little boy named Joe and how he came to me as a third grade teacher and could not read at all. And just the power of, I guess, my confidence that I got from being a National Board Certified Teacher, combining that with the knowledge that I had about literacy and taking that child, a third grader that didn't even know the alphabet and getting him to actually read, just that, the power of, I guess, the impact, just knowing the impact that a teacher can make I mean, he, he cried when he started reading. I mean, and his mother cried. It was it was just really powerful to me. And I think back on that a lot. And he still comes back and visits me sometimes, you know. And it was just a series of bad events and, and horrible things in his life that had kept him from being able to read. But he'd been, had a lot of labels put on him and all kinds of things that then people quit trying to teach him to read at that point because they didn't think he could. He didn't think he could. His mother didn't think he could. And so I think it was the power of the knowledge that you gain from national board certification that helped me see past all of those things and look for his strengths and just start building. So that's mine. Thank you. My research for my dissertation was on the self-efficacy of national board teachers. and. What Holly just explained is exactly what happens. Te uh, national board teachers tend to have more self-confidence. They understand how children learn. And all of the research that is available right now about national boards supports that, how children in national board teachers' classrooms are uh, doing quite well and moving ahead so much faster. Suzanne? Thanks. Um, I would echo what everyone else is saying, that obviously the national board process itself, you know, just really transforms and it was it led to so many different things that I was really fortunate to experience. 
um, including, you know, the powerful letters from parents over the years to say how much, you know, you've impacted this child. Um, I, when I certified, I was a preschool teacher. So I think what I'm really reflecting on today is that um, when I started teaching preschool, um, there were very few preschool teachers who were board certified in Kentucky, and there really still are not very many of us. Um, and I would go on home visits and parents would ask me if I had to have, if I had to go to college to be a preschool teacher. Um, and, you know, at that time I had a master's degree and um, was pursuing board certification. And I actually worked very close to Frankfurt. And so I had a lot of um, KDE employees, kids. Um, I had a lot of teachers' kids in my class. And even, even people that were in the teaching profession had a somewhat of a bias against preschool teachers as being um, less intelligent or less professional than people who teach older grades. So it, some of the things I think that really to me felt important after becoming board certified was I saw a change in the way people viewed me um, as a professional. So it allowed me to then, um, I was invited, this was a long time ago, I know like Lynn, um, dating myself a bit, but um, when Commissioner Will Hoyt was at the department, um, I was invited by Cherry Boyles to help to um, it was the first time that a preschool teacher was involved in analyzing and re um, framing the standards that we were working on um, with as a state weren't even called standards at that time. But um, but that I was um, it was the first time a preschool teacher was invited to represent any of the educators at the table with K-12. So it, that's the kind of thing that I think National Board can do, too. It really transforms our profession and um, raises up the um, professionalism. It gives us the common um, language and idea for what teachers should be able to do, should no one be able to do. Thanks so much for that. Well, we are just about out of time, but I was wondering if each panelist could give maybe one very brief piece of advice to our new NBCTs who are listening today. One piece of what would you tell them as they're beginning um, their leadership career after just now certifying as NBCTs? Keep learning and have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Join, the, the, join the network. <laughs> I would say encourage others to seek national board certification in your school and in your personal communities. Never forget that you need to always be thinking about students and student impact, no matter what your role is. Well, thank you all so much. Again, I hate that this is as much applause as we can give you today because we know the room would just be roaring for our panelists and for our new NBCTs. Um, this concludes our Kentucky NBCT Network Recognition Ceremony to honor our newest NBCTs. We are so excited for you, and we know that this is only the beginning of your education leadership to promote and support accomplished teaching to improve student learning in Kentucky. Congratulations again. <laughs>